I got to ask you about Antifa because we've got an organization which I guess has its roots that go back half a century or so. This idea of an organization mobilized against fascists, except when I see them looting businesses and attacking courthouses and, and, and shouting at people who are Republicans and conservatives, I don't see any fascists on the other side. Uh, what's the deal with Antifa and is this positioning of them as being anti-fascist something of a, of a tactic? Uh, it's absolutely a tactic. Uh, Anti-fascism without fascism which has been a growing phenomenon among the left in the Western world ever since the 1950s. Uh, fascism uh, as a, a, an empty signifier, what the left calls an empty signifier is the perfect foil. Uh, and anti-fascism for that matter was invented really as, as a general slogan, as a general process uh, outside of uh, Italy uh, throughout Europe by the Communist International in 1923 was fundamental, except during the years of the Hitler-Stalin Pact. Uh, Antifa stems first from a communist organization in Germany in 1932 called Antifascistische Aktion, anti-fascist action, and then was uh, revived among the, 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 the European uh, and British left oh, 40 or 50 years ago and in more recent years has become a major organization in the United States to combat fascism. Since fascism doesn't exist, it has to be invented, caricatured, and defined artificially uh, as the uh, enemy of a radical movement which has goals of its own, merely instrumentalizing the use of a kind of anti-fascism to achieve these revolutionary goals. And wouldn't it be fair to say that, I mean, they would, the anti Antifa types regarded Trump as the quintessential fascist, but in the way that we've been talking about fascism, the devotion to an all powerful centralized state, the idea uh, of fascism being anti market and anti capitalist and anti liberal, uh, would it be fair to say that Trump is in no regard of whatever you think of Trump? He's not a fascist, and this was part of their strategic caricature to create a fascism where no fascism existed. Yes, that, that was fundamental from uh, the 2016 campaign on. Uh, I did a whole series of interviews with uh, uh, various journalists in, in 2016 uh, revolving around the question, is Donald Trump a fascist? Uh, and in fact, uh, he had a uh, few of the characteristics of fascism, and his presidency uh, was completely unfascist because uh, he endeavored to reduce the size of the central government and he avoided military activity uh, whenever he could uh, with, with only a few strategic exceptions. So it was a very unfascist presidency. Not, not, uh, not but, to mention, Professor Payne, I mean, I never saw any signs that Trump was trying to, you know, shut down CNN. I mean, his critics would flay him on every platform every second of every day. Uh, and Trump didn't do anything about it. Uh, wouldn't Mussolini or Hitler have stepped right in and shut those people up overnight? Oh, of course. They both had censorship systems. There is a censorship system now in the United States, but it's a censorship system by the left, particularly by big tech. Uh, to close out uh, any kind of expression of which the, the leaders and owners of big tech uh, disapprove. Uh, the whole game about uh, inventing fascism out of whole cloth uh, is, is a political tactic to demonize the opposition. It's a form of stigmatization. Stigmatization is the name of the game and uh, depends on the identification of fascist characteristics. All political movements have certain characteristics in common. That doesn't mean they should be confused for each other. All radical movements particularly have more characteristics in common, whether left or right. Uh, the fact that Trump was a strong leader and strong leadership was characteristic of fascism, ergo meant in this peculiar kind of magical thinking, Trump had to be a fascist. A strong leader on the left, of course, was not a fascist because these definitions, the use of them, are entirely arbitrary. 
I also think of the way that people would say that Trump is a fascist because he's a nationalist. But of course, in the, right when they said that, I would think of people like Gandhi in India or Mandela in South Africa or even Fidel Castro in Cuba. These were all dedicated nationalists, but no one would dream of calling them fascists per se. Well, of course, there are all kinds of nationalists from the, the most statist revolutionary nationalists on the left all the way across the political spectrum. Nationalism uh, has become overall the most universal movement probably of modern times so that uh, you can uh, do any kind of hyphenate nationalism. Fascist nationalism is merely one of the 17 different varieties of nationalism. 